So, a quick rundown is that the party of seven adventurers has had a, a long journey through this campaign, uh, but most recently you were told by the Temple of Cord in Bromdor uh, that the armor, uh, an artifact of Cord, has been missing for a long time, and they were worried that someone or something or some force was working to find a way to destroy it, and they didn't want this to happen. They didn't want the artifact of their god uh, to not be uh, a part of the world anymore. Uh, so you were asked by them uh, via uh, the Archmage of Bromdor, Nalia, uh, to go and look for it. Uh, she, Nalia, helped you narrow down uh, places to look to seven locations, and then with more information given by Yukikaze due to his intimate knowledge of the desert, uh, narrowed it down to one most likely place, uh, which, as you traveled, you found uh, would in fact be the site of an ancient lost city of rock gnomes, once known as Garland, uh, named for their uh, god, Garl Glittergold. Uh, you trekked across the desert and met with uh, Yukikaze's clans, the Nanaboshi, uh, who helped you complete your journey through the dangerous and perilous Sand Sea, uh, and you found your way into an ancient stone structure, mostly buried in the dunes. Uh, now you are within, fighting your way through hordes of mummies, and surviving uh, potentially perilous traps trying to find if contained within this ancient vault of a lost city, uh, which seems to have strange technology, might be contained the armor of Gord. Oh. So, you are currently uh, in hallway 15. Uh, you dealt with this door, which leads to room 5. Um, which had a trap on it such that whenever the door was interacted with uh, by a player character, uh, some sort of spell was activated uh, in this area of the room. And now I am assuming that everyone can see the map and see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Laramendus was able to determine with his Detect Magic that it was some sort of abjuration spell. Uh, but it disappeared as quickly as it appeared, and the group managed not to get uh, affected by it. After the door was opened by Laramenda's unseen servant, uh, Leah ran out into room 5, which turned out to be another corridor, uh, which had six zombies, or mummies, within it, uh, which you got like, into. Oh, hell no. <laughs> you teleported out of there, and a fight began! Uh, you have just defeated those mummies, uh, that patrol. So, you stand around this doorway between 15 and 5. Uh, you know that 14 was the music room. You know that 13 was the room with the chandelier. And you know that 6 was another hallway that had a room with an automatic door here. Uh, a door that you didn't explore here. And then the room with the eyeball over here. What do you want to do? Keep moving forward. <coughs> what is Let's forward? Let's go back into room five. Let's get staying in. So. That would be, yes, room five. Where the thing oh. just came from. What is the marching order going into uh, room five to the north? Yuki Kaz is examining all the mummies. Mm. Um, are any Ew. of them look like Brizard? Interested. Yes, yes. There were, um, I believe, six in this encounter. Uh, three of them would be Dragonborn. And two of them would be obvious members of the Nanaboshi. Guys, I want to take care of these. I will Can I just try mind... casting Firebolt at, these, at, at them to set them ablaze? To make this faster for doing this every time? You can do that. I believe that one of the effects of Firebolt is that it can burn inanimate, non-held objects, correct? Uh, I can double-check. Uh, if you don't mind, I would appreciate that, and I'll say a quick prayer, and then we'll move on. 
I know that Fireball can do that. As long as Firebolt says it can do that, then yes, you'd be able a to do that. A flammable object hit by the spell ignites if it isn't being worn or carried. Then yes, you may burn corpses with this. Uh, then we will move them to a good spot and burn them. And I will I request... Out, like, out of the doorway so we don't have to go for burning corpses. Okay, so exactly. you will, you will want to tell me what is a good spot. Because you've got... This is a long hallway... There's so another hallway here. Up against the wall on the right or right side looking at the, the hallway. Down the hallway a little bit. We'll ask uh, Vendar to move and it'll be where Vendar is. I'm going back out to the hallway. She is. Yeah, Vendar's gonna go back and check out room five. So then I'll nicely, respectfully ask for him to cast the spell, and I'll say a prayer, and then I'll leave him alone. And I'm going, I'm going to be careful and stealthy about it. Are you? A roll. Uh, yeah, so you're going to be stealthy, roll stealth. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a Vendor, so a low roll is, in fact, a low roll. Thirteen. Thirteen. Level. My stealth below it, so I'll be able to roll as a twenty-one. Okay. Liable talent. I didn't catch that battle. Can you stealth and dodge at the same time outside of combat? Mm. I mean, a rogue could, because they could like bonus action stealth and. Regular action dodge, but normally one. I don't know. Yeah, out of combat is weird. So I, I don't know. I would say that if you're focusing on being stealthy, you're not also fo you're 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 focusing yeah. on carefully placing your feet, but you're not also prepared to spring away, which would be not stealthy. Fair enough. Okay. Um, so Vendar and Leah enter the hallway. Uh, you see this uh, left to right corridor. It ends in a solid wall. Uh, the whole place is this um, white hard stone uh, that has been expertly cut and crafted. Uh, again, along the wall are lit torches and sconces. Uh, and so there is no impairment to vision. Uh, you can see that the, the hallway continues to the west here, where it hits a T-intersection. Check out that door to room 12. Okay. Uh, Leah, what are you doing? And the rest of the party can have finished their uh, their immolation of the bodies at this point because that's not really going to take long all right well i've moved up into the hallway same uh i'm going to continue being stealthy and i'm going to go close to the opposite wall than vendor is like uh, next to 23 and i'm going to continue walk direction but listening to every door Okay, so you're going to need to roll me some active perception. Perception. This is all the 15. Okay. Which is lower than my passive, so that sucks. So what's your passive? 16. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you got a 16. <laughs> You can't roll lower than that. So you're at 23. All right, you don't hear anything at 23. Um, what's your passive there, uh, Vendar? 25. 25. Okay, you hear movement uh, in room 12. You hear a very odd sound that's grinding and scraping, like somebody is dragging heavy stone across stone. 
Uh, I'm gonna check the door for traps and okay. other flies. Or is roll it. my detect magic still up, or is it gone now? Let me think. Uh, you would cast it just before leaving, then you got into two fights. I'll say maybe three. And then three. there was also the burning of the, the bodies, so. It lasts ten minutes, right? Yep. I'll say three minutes have gone by. Okay. Um, the, the burning of the bodies, so remember that he, he used a cantrip to do it. And so burning the bodies is only going to take, like, a minute while Riken says a prayer. You can, you can, a... A prayer. Sorry. can also say a prayer. I mean, he, he is a holy character. He can say prayers. He won't go. Um, that's fair. <laughs> uh, do I... What exactly was I rolling? Uh, you were rolling to check for traps, so you're going to be rolling uh, investigation. I'm sorry, okay. check the presence of any magic. You detect the presence of any magic. Let's see. Uh, how much stone does it take to block detect magic? Uh, I, I believe it's a foot. foot. Yeah. Then no. Cool. I'm not asking for any reason in particular. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's a, yeah, a foot of stone. <laughs> well, while they're doing that, Yuki Kaz is going to kind of mosey down to door 16 and see if that one's locked or not. Uh, I got so, a 17 investigation. You got a 17 investigation. Uh, there don't appear to be any obvious traps on this one, and you would have been um, placing your hands upon it to test for little... Um, divots and things of that nature, so nothing magical triggered when you touched it either. It seems to be completely mundane uh, double door like the others with the uh, horizontal latches. Um, did I hear any scraping sounds from behind my door? No, no, I believe I told you that you heard nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought. I okay. was checking. Yep, nope, you heard nothing. Um, Yuki Kaze, what's your passive perception? Uh, ten. I don't even believe one. Okay. Um, you hear something, but you're not sure what it is. It doesn't sound like a creature. Um, it almost sounds like maybe, um, it's really hard to describe. Maybe s sandpaper on wood. I'm going to check if my door is locked. Or... Traps first. I'm going to check for traps first. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. Roll your roll your investigation. Um. <laughs> uh, is this Cyrus Laramendis and Rybel? Is this where you want to be uh, standing? Are you just watching these three split off to different doors, or would you like to be giving them suggestions, or running away, or checking a door yourself? Normally, I'd want to be as far away from the door they're opening, but at this point, that's just going to keep putting me closer to a different door that somebody else is opening. It's true. Uh, I got a 17. You got a 17. Okay. Uh, you detect no traps. I, w and... I will say one thing. Could we not see about opening three doors at once? Bad thing is behind doors. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Riken asked Devil if he wants to go to 25 then, so it's four doors. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that, was, that was the desired outcome. Jebel the Tiger, what do you think of this suggestion from your writer to go and check door 25? Um, I, uh, I, I, sorry, go on. Off? <laughs> All right, let's allow the person that I'm trying to talk to to talk. Uh, I want to... I'm going to turn around and look at... Riken, and then kind of nod towards the ground. <laughs> I think you know what he means. Uh, yes, Riken will, uh, get off of the ball. And once he's off, I'm going to revert to gnome form. <sighs> no, we were such a good team. No more um, right rival and Dedkin. No more so, rival. While they're getting off, I'm gonna stay. Uh, I'm gonna say to those guys, I don't really think I hear monsters in here, but something kind of sandy grinding. This one sounds empty. I'm gonna check if it's locked. There, it is not there, locked. There are creatures that are made of sand. Okay. 
there's, there's definitely something behind this door. Yeah, I'm opening my door, but opening it slowly and peeking in. Okay. You open it. I'm gonna go hide behind someone. Do you make that clear before you do it? Or do like you it will go over to Leah. <clears throat> Uh, Vendar, what did you say you were doing with your door before I continue? I wanted to check if it was locked. I was also wondering if I could, if there was a way to like peek through a keyhole or anything, if there was a way to look through, try to detect any more without actually opening the door. Uh, sure. Uh, it is not locked. You give the handles a light, uh, uh, you try depressing the handles lightly, and they give uh, past where you would expect them to stop if they were locked. Um, there are keyholes on them, uh, you may look through. I will attempt to do that. Alright, the viewpoint isn't great through your keyhole, but your high perception, uh, does allow you to see that the room beyond is lit, um, and there appear to be off, uh, to this side, to your right, um, uh, what appear to be sculptures of, um, individuals uh from what you can tell you you can just make out like portions of a couple of them but they look like you know sculptures of figures people um directly ahead you can make out uh a zombie uh, mummy excuse me here carrying a torch and lighting sconces Is this the one yes that's what you can make out from where you are from that keyhole um, I'm going to jump back to what Leah wants to do. Yeah. I like how they're just now, like, lighting all the stuff. Hmm. Do you make that comment in character? Leah, what do you see? Okay, so this one's a little bit interesting. Uh, you open the door slowly, carefully. Uh, the room beyond um, is illuminated, but it doesn't seem like there are uh, torches lighting up this one. This one seems to be illuminated uh, by this uh, purple area here, which to you appears like a wall of swirling luminous energy. So it seems to you as though the room ends basically right here, uh, in a wall of swirling luminous purple energy. And that is casting its dancing purple light across the rest of the room. Pretty. Now remember this? Yes. We, I think we need some magic experts here. I go over to the door. I follow, because I guess, why not? I magic. <laughs> uh, Vendar, there, are people are <laughs> people are gathering behind you, but they're not stacking up on your door. You, you hear them moving down the hallway, and they all seem to be gathering around Leah and her door. I go check ah. out that door. My door is better than your door. Your door was opened first. <laughs> a little more reckless. Indeed. I could have been reckless. <laughs> Alright, I'm just missing Yukikaze and Jebel, and Yukikaze and Jebel would be aware that everybody suddenly went, okay, hold on, let's see what's going on there. I guess I will slowly move away from my door and head towards those idiots. Okay. <laughs> hey. I'm over here by request. Not my fault. Because uh -oh. I Jebel, uh... I didn't request you. <laughs> <laughs> you said magic people, or something along those lines. I said Lermendus. Yes, but they was followed by need like magical expertise over here or something along those lines. So, <laughs> Jebel, everybody Lermendus. seems to be gathering up over here. Okay. As Leah pushes her door open. Yeah. To let it be completely open wide and let Laramentus do his thing. So, what are you doing there, Jebel? Uh. 
You gonna move oh, over? Lot, huh? Which room? They're at. They're 23? at twenty-three. Yeah. 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 I suppose I'd head over. Okay. I'll just put you right here. You wanna be right there? Um. Uh, up there. You said. Right? I put you right there. Yeah, you have to understand. There's a bit of a lag here, so I don't know where. Can you south of me? Can, can you read the screen? Can you make so out what the it says? Screen right now has where I was highlighted. He's wow, putting you so one gone. south of me. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. You might so, want to reload the stream if you're that far behind. It's not that bad. It's, <coughs> it's just my connection is shit. Poor Jebby here. Jeb. All right. So yes, you see this dimly lit room, and the lighting source seems to be dancing and uneven as it casts um, blue and purple shadows across the floor. Uh, it appears that there is a luminous wall of energy over here. <clears throat> over here, which is 10, 20, 30, 40 feet in. It certainly looks like magic from here, but it's outside of the reach of your detect magic. I have the unseen servant who is holding a torch go into the room. <laughs> okay, the unseen Sorry, servant torch. goes into the room with a torch. The room is now lit by a torch. That looks like a floating torch to us, right? Yes. Yeah, it just looks like a floating uh, torch. What uh, is your passive perception, Laramendus? My passive perception is... 14. Okay. Yep. I'm 16. Um, it looks like a strangely Spartan room. Um, the walls uh, have some colorful pattern to them, but no artwork or images that are of any meaning uh, the mm -hmm. floor is the same tiled uh, a stone stonework that the rest of the floor around the place seems to be um, and it seems like your light uh, from the torch is incapable of penetrating the wall in fact it reflects off of it as though it is a solid wall uh, and the floor has no magic on it that I can tell no um, I want the torch to attempt to go into the purple. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to announce that this is my intention so okay. that anyone can chime in if they so choose. Be careful. You're gonna die. Into the <laughs> that is why we are outside of the room. The... It's not the right room. <laughs> I don't hear any objection being raised by the party. The torch vanishes into the purple wall of energy. And you no longer see any sign of its light. Can you call it back? I attempt to do so. It comes back out of the purple wall of energy. It looks unharmed. So, who wants to go first? Because I don't suggest that. Not it. <coughs> hey, Javel. <laughs> <laughs> Riken goes through. Riken's going no. in the room? Oh my goodness. Apparently. Alright. Uh, I would so. just no more than 20 feet. So are you going to just muscle your way past Leah and and, and go through the door well, to go through? I'm not going to just like push her over. <laughs> but um, you're going to squeeze past her. Yeah. Okay, so you squeeze past her to enter the room. Boop. Okay, as you dare, I'm going to grab your arm. Like what? to prevent him from going into the room? No. We saw that the thing went past and, and then came back. Yes, it's true. So Riken <laughs> enters the room, uh, squeezing gingerly past Leah and stepping through the door. As soon as he gets to the other side, everyone there hears chuck <coughs> as though something is moving under the stones. And after only a fraction of a second. Uh, Riken, the f stone tile under your feet suddenly lifts up at an angle rapidly and launches you backwards into Leah. 
Oh. Oh no. <laughs> Ask Don't me. Twist her again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, both of you are going to take 2d6 damage as you collide with each other. Ow. Um. Laramenda seems excited. I have an idea. If people want to get out of the way of the door. So, Lara, uh, Leah and Riken, please each take uh, 5 bludgeoning damage uh, as Riken gets launched backwards into Leah and smushes her. Oh, you rolled the D. <laughs> the two D6. Yes. Uh, yeah. Let's look at find, finding my body. So. <laughs> five, five bludgeoning. That's it. Mm hmm. Five damage. I like the HP thing on DD Beyond. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like it too. It's, it's very good. It's such a good system. <laughs> Making fun of myself with that poor pronunciation. We don't know of any rock gnomes. Or would it just be like a few that village that visit the village from time to time? You knew one. At least. Yeah. You knew one uh, who would visit the the village from time to time. The the other people in your village didn't tend to like him, so he didn't stay long, especially because he would um always have little, like, wind-up toys of small dogs and cats that would, um, like, move around a little bit. They are very small handheld type things, but the, the, uh, children in the Gnomish village really enjoyed them. And this, uh, the, the adults in your village, the parents and the, and the elders seemed very distrustful of these little gadgets. Hmm. So I put an X on the square where Riken stood, and the the tile lifted up and launched him. That was not very far. Was it like a maze? Well, it's because Leah was standing there, so you collided with her. So, are oh, people gonna back way through the, the door to let me test my idea? I will take one step to the west. Yeah, I'm. I do. He's going to step away once Riken is off me. <laughs> How far do I have to move? Sorry, uh... I would not want to be in front of the door. At no. least, at okay. least, okay. I didn't pass out. Well. Outside the door. At yeah, least I'll I didn't pass out this time. <sighs> and as I'm moving, I am going to use the Say, what is up with rock gnomes? Who, who, who traps the city? It's this is the vault. Is it? Yeah, yeah it's the trap room, room, something it? worth protecting. I, I uh, not necessarily. You might want someone to think that. Yeah. Fair enough. Did but at least the chances are higher. Um, uh, but we, yes, Jebel, you you read a sign as you were entering this place that indicated that this was the the treasury vault or the treasure vault of the and and it indicated that it directly belonged to the master of garland okay i forgot that mm. that's fair it's been a while so vendor do you want to be completely out of the line of the door i'll put you over here or are you okay right there i'll get out of the line of the door okay <laughs> i was going to get little images and then shrink them down to the size of these squares so I could just drag them around rather than having to delete and retype things, but I didn't uh, I didn't get home early enough to do that. Alright, what are you doing, Cyrus? I'm moving five feet forward and five feet to the left. Okay. I'm going to use precipitation to make like a little pebble and toss it on the like temporary little pebble and try and toss it on the square where Riken got launched. Okay, you toss it there. Nothing happens. <clears throat> Anyone have something a little heavier that's not um, sharp? Because the only thing I have really have to upgrade to after that is a dagger. And I don't want that getting launched at anyone. Let me see. Um, 
characters, it's white and if another spot will trigger. Um, I have a bag with, <coughs> like, coal in it. That could work. How much coal? How heavy is it? I can't remember. It's it's enough. Uh, it's enough to summon Baron eight times. So a lot. Is that well? I mean, how much coal is used in each summoning? Is it a pound of coal, or is it ten pounds of coal, or is it like an ounce? I can't remember. Well, because if it's an ounce, then it's only eight ounces of coal, which is still as heavy as the pebble he just threw. <laughs> I believe, if I'm familiar, it's like ten. It's either one or ten gold worth of incense and coal, or something along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. So it's or char or char coal. not going to be heavy. I mean, you're talking at most eight pounds of stuff. Yeah. At the absolute most. Because yeah, ten, ten know, gold worth of like that, ten gold. That's almost all incense. Okay, then let's let's look a little further into my stuff. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Out of for heavy, right? <laughs> I mean, they do wear a couple pounds. I do have okay. those. What now? Rations? Rations are one pound each, I think? Uh, they're, I believe they're two pounds each. That doesn't sound right. Give me a second. I thought they were half ah. a pound each. Ah. I, I would have said uh, half a pound each. What, 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 what about this? I say I got one of the Beholder books, unless they sold all of them. Uh, none of them were desired, because they were all, like, yeah. real trashy. Yeah, so I take out one of the Beholder books. Uh, what, what book is this? Because... What book I'm being handed by Liv based on what was in there is going to affect things a little bit. Uh, it, it was called Beauty is in the Eye of the Beholder, and it has a cover that is a very steamy romance novel. All the pages are stuck together. I love that encounter. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you, you, you have this book that weighs about a pound. This just gonna kind of like embarrassed look on his face, like, yeah, it would be is this closer... yours? Would it be closer to two pounds? Because I've noticed that they have fifteen beholder books that together thirty pounds. Sure, we'll go with that. Yeah. So, Laramanda, is this, is this oh, yeah, yours? You're not reading. Uh, I, it, I wasn't, was it, it wasn't in my, in my person. If I was typing, um, what? Oh. Leo is the one who handed it to him. Yeah, Leo's yeah. the one who who pulled it out and gave it to uh, him. We found it in. It, it doesn't matter. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't read it. All right. I forgot to write I it. I would then t pick it up and immediately toss it on the pressure plate. Okay. Nothing happens. Okay. So it does take. And maybe one of the little people won't be heavy enough. I mean, it also could be like. Creature type, if, well, or I'm not even whatever the in world version of me referring to that would be. So How many creature? It's, like it's actually called creature subtype. Okay. Most things like that would be magic, and I'm not detecting the presence okay, of any magic. Okay, so who's the lightest of us? I have um, a question. It's either me or him. I point at Jubble. I have a me question. Why? What, what is Jubble? I still yes, have Jubble? a question. Yes, Jubble. Out of character. Okay. How many sling bullets could I fit into one leather pouch? A leather pouch, sling bullets, uh, 10 to 20. 20. 20 is a pound and a half. So I have four leather pouches. Mm, I could <laughs> Do you have 80 sling bullets? Yes. Okay. What the heck? <laughs> so that's five pounds. Uh, what was that? A lot of sling bullets. Yeah, there's a lot of sling bullets. Yeah. So, how much do you weigh, Cyrus? Um. Let's see. I think I'm. Like. You know, 45 pounds or so. Cyrus. So, uh, Jebel? About 40 pounds. Okay. And these three inches. Could you maybe try to step? 
your life um, I will I'm gonna basically take my backpack off uh -huh. and anything else I'm carrying and then step onto a snow uh, which one are you going to step onto this one or that one and is Cyrus still standing where he is standing uh, no, I'm. If someone's stepping on place, I'm getting out of the way. Oh my god. Yeah, I'll basically just be swapping spots with Chuppel, I expect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, just which, to make one that clear. He, which one does he want me to stand on? Which one has he been testing? The one that. I'm sure this one will make it go one? off. Step on either. Yeah. Actually, step on both. <laughs> step on both. Oh, step on both. Right. Right. I'm going right. to step on the one that. Riken didn't step on first. Okay. And you are just stepping right onto it, all of your weight? Yeah. How much do you weigh? About 40 pounds. 40 pounds. All right. You step onto this platform. Then to this, I'm sorry. You step onto this stone tile. And uh, uh, there is a bare moment where it seems that nothing has happened. And then you hear a click and a rattle, and suddenly you're flying through the air. And you get launched to the opposite side of the hallway and hit the wall with a lot of force. Uh, you will take a eleven bashing, eleven bludgeoning damage, non-magical. As you strike the wall with your body. Okay, that took longer than... Riken. Okay. I could cast I Fly on some of us, but then all the tree can cross. And then there's the whole thing of not knowing what happens when I touch the purple stuff. Yeah. Um... Okay, I'm standing back oh, up to... Okay. Where are we standing the before... Holding, right? You could I, I, perhaps cast fly on the heavy ones, and then the little ones could get in the bag of holding. I am standing back to where I was. You're gonna go back Before. here. The little ones might be able to dash across. I'm going back to the doorway. Mm -hmm. You're in the doorway. What would you like to do from the doorway? The party is watching you, I assume. Yep. Are you going to do the bird thing? Have I seen the bird thing? I don't remember at this point. No, you didn't. I am going to cast Find Traps. Okay, you cast Find Traps. Now this reveals uh, squares where somebody has made a trap intended to be detrimental to you, correct? Yes. And is there any role for it, or does it simply reveal them? I should be checked, but I think it just... Let me just uh, we sense the presence of any trap within range uh, that is within line of sight. Mm -hmm. A trap for the purpose of science is normally expected. Sudden or unexpected effect we consider harmful or undesirable. Mm -hmm. Which is more than just this way. Uh, natural reason. And it detects the exact location so you can see the squares where they're occurring? I, I mean, the only thing no. it says is you sense the presence of any trap within range. Okay then you sense the presence of traps. You learn the general nature of the trap pose, of the danger posed by trap you sense. Okay. You know that the general danger of the trap <laughs> that the trap poses is that it will unexpectedly launch you into the far wall. <laughs> wow, we learned so much. <laughs> You yes, know, so you know that there are traps in range. Is it tell? It tells you about every trap individually or collectively. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't specify. <laughs> I love that. So <laughs> I'm going to just say that it tells you you are aware that there are four traps within your line of sight. They all have the same purpose. Only four. You know, if I could jump ten feet, I could try jumping the platforms, but I can't jump that far. Could you, like, say you prepare, like, you step on it and you're prepared to immediately jump to the plat to the, the space to the left when it goes to go off? Uh, because, of the, because of the way the 
projectile moves that would probably end up killing you. Okay. And they'll probably activate no matter what once you step on it. The fact so the fact that this trap <laughs> the fact that this trap doesn't have a reflex save is an indicator that there isn't a way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jebo. Mm hmm. Can you turn into a bird? Can yeah. <laughs> then we can fly over. And then I, what? I yeah I can send Kyoko in there, but uh, to to what end? We still don't know what that purple stuff is. Not if you get vaporized when you try to go through the purple. If we just want to get to the purple bit, I could try making a layer of stone above the floor for us to walk on. That's the best plan yet. We just float? Well... It would be on the ground. Of... On top of the ground. Well, would I be able to take it on the ground or can I maybe actually just shoot out of the wall? Yeah, you can maybe come out of the wall. You could, it could come out of the wall, so it could be like inches above the ground. Yeah, because that's what I'm thinking. I could basically make a new floor. <laughs> I am going to relate to the route that I detected four separate traps. Only four? So it's not the entire floor, probably. Also, neat trick. That they all do the same thing. Well, I don't have any better ideas. I, I feel like this room is worth investigating, though something that that purple thing is there for a reason. And I want to know why. So... For the record, it, it's a hey, fifth wait. level spell for me to try and make a new floor over this trap. So, once we're doing this, we better be committed. Um... Vendar. Your passive perception allows you to know that there is somebody coming from the uh, door directly across the hallway. But there is somebody approaching that door. I was actually just about to ask that. We've been making a lot of noise. Yeah, it seems the enemies in that room have uh, heard us. I'm going to prepare a shot to, to shoot the one when he comes through. I'm going to do the same thing. <coughs> the the, the Delta just lost. I'm going to hide behind anyone I can. Which is basically anyone but Jevil. Because <laughs> I can share the space of a creature of size larger than me, I can hide behind a creature that's also a size larger than me. Uh, you Do you kind of hide behind me? Yes. As a matter of fact, I might share a square and hide behind... Actually, I'm going to probably share sharing... Your size category is small, correct? Yep. Okay, yes, that is why. And I mean, how tall is Cyrus? Uh, three feet? Yeah, three, three feet, three, three inches. inches. Three foot three. He was, gonna hide. he was planning on hiding uh, behind the person. It is... Three inches it, shorter than <laughs> no, it, I can't hide behind you. That's the one person I can't, I said. It <laughs> is an inherent trait of halflings that they are capable of getting underfoot and hiding behind creatures that are larger than them. Even only one uh, size category. I did. I didn't know that. But... If it tried to hide behind my bum, well, I would feed it to the mummy myself. Well, I can't. There's a wall behind so how, you. How a creature or a small creature? Medium. So uh, Leah's Lea is, Lea is a medium creature. So your size category, interestingly, your size category is defined by your race and and not by your exact dimensions. Halflings I mean, are no, small creatures. <laughs> I believe that gnomes are also small creatures. Yep. Most most yeah. humanoid mo most humanoid player character races are medium creatures. Yep. If you are if you are to follow size decrements of earlier editions where the your height actually mattered, India would still be categorized as a normal creature because she's taller than dwarves. Mm. All right, so let me see here. Uh, which ones? I think I have to be below four. 
to be considered small. Alright. So, um, yes, because of Vendar informing the party something was going on, I will let everybody uh, prepare an action uh, and then roll initiative so that we can do those actions in order. And I just realized that we haven't had any music. Uh, I got a nat 20. I've been listening to reggae this entire time. It's quite chill. Uh, I got a 13. I got a 20. Not natural. I went from a natural 1 to a non natural 20 due to halfling luck. That's okay. a decent start for the night. Shit. <laughs> That's a lot in that twenties. And twenties that's not uh, max. <laughs> what's initiative thing? Jacob. Dex. Yeah, we, we, there were feet back in. Uh do you have those feet? Well I don't. I don't know what I don't know what vendor's initiative. Oh uh uh two nat twenty is on initiative. No, I can't wait to hear Vikings. <laughs> and followed by two non-natural 20s. The lowest so far has been a 17. Yeah. And second lowest has been a 20. <laughs> Jacob. Okay. Yeah. What's your um, initiative bonus thing? Three. Three. Oh, we're both threes. Mine's also three. Huh. In 40 minutes, it'll be four. Mm. I would have expected the rogue to be higher. Yeah, I only got it 16. I spent my upgrade points on getting feats instead of upgrading my deck. So. Are you level 10 yet? 49 XP from that. And 49 why, XP. Okay. Question 1, why <laughs> did you do a journal? Question 2, are you going to upgrade your decks with your next feat, which is next level? Yes, it's not next level, it's level 12, not 10. No, rogues get an extra feat at 10. Oh. Yeah, rogues get it at 10. Upgrading my deck because I don't learn any more feats that I really care about. So, Vendor 20. So, Did anybody get a natural 20? Uh, Vendor yeah. and Jeffel. Both, yes. Vendor and Jeffel. Uh, we have to reroll to see which of us has to go first. Sure. Um, well, that's really. You can. It's generally only necessary if you also have the same modifier, which I know you don't. We do. You do? We're both plus three. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then, yes, you do have to roll it off. There's a lot of plus threes for initiative in here. I've heard four so far. Uh, AC is useful. Indeed. That's why I have 17 of it. <coughs> so... Me for my tiebreaker, so... Did I you... rolled a 15. Jevil well, goes first. Jevil goes first? Okay. I'm preparing Thorn Whip. Okay. Um, you know what to duck behind someone in the hive, they'll be preparing a firebolt. I believe Laramendus also got a 20. Uh, 21. 21. And that's all often since he, and, and it's just a butler okay. that gets annihilated. Cyrus got a 20 as well. <laughs> yep. The first known he's seen in like hundreds of years. <laughs> just. Steve, from accounting. By the way, Waco, what would you get for your second initiative roll since we, you know, tied? Oh, right, yeah. Um, uh, 14. 16. Yep. So, there it goes first. Okay. Who's going last? Riken. Riken got a 13. <laughs> the... and... No, but 13 is, is oh, not bad. Better roll. I got 17. Right. Poor Riken. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> well, I know the feels, it? man. Remember last time he rolled something like a 15 or something, but he still went like second last, but everyone else was rolling like 20. I you, That happened when he had a 20 once. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone through like a nine hour D&D &D session and rolled, and for initiative, which was rolled numerous times, 
I don't think I ever rolled above five. I believe I got like a zero, a one, a three, and a four. All right, initiative is, is up. But even if you're in it, uh, modifier. For this, plus no, three. No, I'm Alex. Minus one. Oh, okay, then you never had a 20. I remembered wrong on that. <laughs> then. I mean, he could have alert. All right, so. The door opens. The door opens, and you see four mummies. Uh, again, they seem to be a mix of Dragonborn and Tabaxi and a gnome and half giant. And then, then they get. You really only seen these yeah. types of creatures uh, be the mummies. You've not. Um, what did the mummies actually get? Did they actually get an eleven. No, they got a 14. It should say 14. Then why does it still say 11 on mine? I don't know. I mean, everything else is all the same though, so there you go. So many 20s. <laughs> it happens. Alright. Uh, the doors open. And these four mummies begin to walk into the hallway. So, everybody may take their prepared actions in the order of initiative. Uh, the first mummy through gets hit with a thorn whip. Alright, so I'll just do this. We'll call this M1, M2, M3, M4 for simplicity. I need my... Yes, yes, I know. Dead. All right. Boom. 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 One, two, three, four. Just taking a second to get all of this set up. Uh, the gnome. Okay. So. Uh, number one appears to be a half giant. Uh, number two appears to be a dragonborn. Number three appears to be a gnome. And number four appears to be a tabaxi. They have, again, as with all the ones you've seen so far, tatters of armor or clothing upon them that are giving them a C. Uh, some of them are wearing weapons. Uh, that The half-giant, in fact, uh, has a battle axe, a, a two-handed great axe in his hand. Um... And the gnome appears to have a dagger in his hand. I'm just going to call them all he, even though they probably have genders besides that. Uh, but they are desiccated corpses, and so it is not immediately obvious. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, Jebel, make your attack. Or is it a saving throw? No, I have to roll to hit. Okay, so you said first one through the door. This was a double door. Are you attacking the half giant or the <gasps> dragonborn? One um, or two? Two. Two, the dragonborn. Okay. So that is. He seems to be a bit more lightly armored, anyway. Six. Uh, I hope so, because that's a 14. You, would, you, you managed to hit him. Woohoo! Oh, I minimized. Okay. So you you summon uh, or create on the ground a, a green thorny vine that lashes out at the dragonborn and strikes it uh, with its for spikes. For two whole damage. For two whole damage. 
two hole non magical piercing damage. Non magical piercing piercing damage. Uh, he appears to be resistant to that. <laughs> he, he's gonna feel this device. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's not. <laughs> that whole one point of damage. That whole, that whole one point of damage. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I'm not going to them anyway. Up next is Vendar. I'm glad I have such a high minimum. Go so, ahead. Uh, speak for yourself. They haven't had turned in initiative yet? They have not. Okay. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill that gnome. The gnome is number three. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use sharpshooter. I don't like the fact that the gnome has a dagger. Screw that gnome. <laughs> it's really his positioning, but. Gnomes like spooks. 17 to hit. 17 will hit the gnome. You fire an arrow and it weaves its way past the half giant before you and into the gnome. How much damage? Thirty-seven magical piercing damage. Thirty-seven magical piercing damage. Okay. And then I'm gonna make the arrow explode. Double okay. That's a DC fifteen deck save. Okay. We're aiming in a fifteen foot radius for that square. Okay, a fifteen foot radius. One, two, three. Okay. You manage to the 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 arrow. Uh, as I said, weaves his way past the, the half-giant and strikes into the, the gnome's armor, uh, directly in the middle of his chest. And then suddenly, it begins to glow with an orange light and detonates. A fireball engulfs the area... here. Nice break. <coughs> That's, uh... Air damage. I didn't hear the number, except that it ended with a three. And in nine, oh. it's uh, going to be a total of nine magical fire damage. Okay, nine magical fire, nine fire damage uh, as it explodes flames. They are going to make their saves half giant. Uh, got a 14, so it doesn't make it. Dragonborn, uh, doesn't make it. Gnome. Uh... 15 DC, so he makes it. And Tabaxi does not make it. So, <laughs> the person who got hit was the only one who made it. Uh, and because fire deals double damage um, to these guys, he takes the full 9 anyway. So, 18 damage to this guy is going to take him to... Uh, that these guys are going sorry he takes nine not 18 goodness gracious there we go these guys take 18 uh, that uh, that and that Oh, no, that is right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, everything's cool. Everything's cool. Yeah, so, that area explodes fire, and uh, all of the zombies are engulfed, the mummies are engulfed in flame. They're dry, uh, desiccated husk flesh uh, catching fire easily, uh, and they begin <coughs> moving toward the group ablaze. And then can I move to right next to Leah? Uh, okay. It's just, it's just this bad for my Alzma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are they are smoking and smoldering. Uh, Vendor drops back after doing that. Uh, and that brings us to Laramendus. Okay. Um, so, Ray of Frost at M1. 
because uh, I can really only eh, no, I, they the only one I really couldn't hit is M3. So which one is most hurt? One of the other ones? Uh, most hurt is M3. The others are all the same. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I guess M2 is the most, <laughs> but it's like one point one different. Yeah, it's one point different as the vine whip. Let's go for M4 to maybe try and make it so it might not get to where it wants to go. Okay. So, Ray of Frost. For a 27 to hit. That'll hit. Seven cold damage, and it is slowed by ten feet. It resists the cold damage. Ba boom, and it is slowed. Number four is slowed by ten feet. Try and make myself remember by doing that. Okay. After Lara Mendes fires off his icy cold bolt, Ray of Frost, uh, encasing part of the zombie in uh, crystallizing ice uh, it is Cyrus turn alright <clears throat> I'm gonna shoot a firebolt at the uh, half giant okay that is number one alright I'm pretty sure I missed, but let's find out. Uh, oh, that's a spell attack bonus. Uh, 11 to hit. An 11 to hit number one is going to miss. Okay. I'd like to move behind Vendar. You would like to move behind Vendar. Oh. Okay. Don't back up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can turn yourself into a projectile to fight them. I mean, I could. <laughs> All right. Don't tempt me. I'll do Leah, it. Leah, you're up. Yeah, I had prepared an Eldritch Blast, so it's going to hit, well, I assume M8. No, M M8. M2. M2? And what is the roll? That what I think it is? Yes, it is. That's a fumble. That one will miss. And what? And, th and then I crit. And then I crit. Okay, so, so it I makes up for the fumble. Like a, it's like, got a one and a 20. <laughs> I was even out. This is one of the cases where, you, as you play online, you started to question whether or not this actually happened. But, uh, um... It's only the third natural 20 of the night, and we just started. Yeah. You know, I've been watching um, Vox Machina lately, and they sometimes it's just like nat twenty, nat twenty, nat twenty, nat twenty, nat twenty, nat twenty. It's just like okay. <laughs> I guess this is how this goes tonight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, six force damage. Six and five, force five and a one. It's like every time I crit with this, one of the rolls are just so low that it doesn't go above ten anyway. <laughs> So your your first blast of force crosses the the distance between you and veers at the last moment over its shoulder, uh, missing horribly. But the the second one takes it right in the chest, dealing a modicum of damage. After Leah, they 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 hiss and gurgle at you as they take damage. A lot of the hissing though seems to be coming from their flesh burning. Uh, Yukikaze. I'm pretty safe here, like in between everyone. Yukikaze. He he's not here. That the disconnect you possibly heard that was him. No, my uh, yeah, I'm, in stream I'm in streamer mode. I don't hear connects and disconnects. Ah, well, he's not here. Mummy's turn. <laughs> Doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. Wait, moments get to go before Riken. Didn't Riken prepare anything? Yeah, but he rolled bad. 
so yeah. he's prepared doesn't matter? No. This isn't a surprise round. Uh, okay. I think M2 will go there. I can roll due to. There he is. Mac? Yukigaze, it's your turn. If I hadn't have warned them, they would have surprised us. Would have been great. I need the alert feet. I need all the feats. Yukigaze, it's your turn. He is muted. I do not know why. Please, please give me a second, okay? Everyone shot moved from a distance. No one's actually moved up to the the, the zombies are still in the doorway. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure this updated correctly. All right. I'm gonna draw. I'm drawing my magic sword, my short sword in my my main hand with drawing Sumimaru in my uh, off hand, and I will. Draw both those, and I have a half giant in front of me, so I'll just proceed forward to attack the half giant. Okay. With a full attack. You move 15 feet, which means you have 15 feet remaining after that, and you attack. I have to mute myself for a second. Remember that you can attack and then move again. First attack's a miss, I only got 11. Okay. Uh, 12. Nope. And then with my long sword, it's gonna be 20. That'll hit. Gonna be eight uh, non magical slashing. Eight non magical slashing. Alright. Are you going to do anything else with your turn? You still have 15 feet of movement. I'm not gonna be a wuss. I'm gonna be a body blocker to keep them in the doorway. Okay. That means it is the mummy's turn. Uh, M1 is going to... I'll just do them in numeric order. M1 is going to attack uh, Malachi Yukikaze with his two-handed great axe. And that is a 14 to hit. Miss. Okay. Uh, and then he will attempt to bite you. And that is a... 16 to hit. Hell miss. Okay. Uh, after that, M2 is gonna move up in front of Riken. And it's capable of doing that without triggering any attacks. And then it's going to blast a cone of sand. Here. Always the cone of sand. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> that that motherfucker. <laughs> How dare he. So, um, what kind of save is it? It's a dexterity save as a, a whirlwind of sand. It it heaves back, its chest expanding unnaturally. You can hear the cracking of bones and the stretching uh, of the flesh as it as it continues to burn. 
and it blows out a, a fiery gust of sand across all of you. Okay, I got a 20. Okay. Uh, I got a... Seventeen. Okay. Uh, Vendar. Oh, oh. Uh, do we get uh, Riken's bonus? Yes. Okay, then it's a twenty-three. Okay, Vendar. Got a twenty-five. Okay, Cyrus. Um, I mean, it doesn't. You know, it's something I'm not gonna bother asking. Um, let's see. Twenty. Twenty-six. Okay, Jebel. Sorry, what? Dexterity saving throw. Uh, 20 on the die. Draw. 3, 23. Okay. Bonus, I assume. So, 26. Uh, he's not in within Riken's range. Oh, Riken's range is only 10 feet? Yeah. yeah. Okay, gotcha. It's just me and Which right means he and is in range. He is? Oh. I miscounted that a little. My bad. Ten feet Ten, no, be this is Riken's range. Anyone who is in his line of sight. And he was in range. It's a ten-foot ten radius. Six, so. <laughs> Which means it's a burst too. Okay, so uh, Riken, you are at disadvantage for the next two rounds to make attacks. <coughs> is going to move up to here. So, wait. So, nothing happens when I make the save? Nothing happens when you make the save. Oh, okay. I mean, it's happened before. We just, all you do is... And M3 die. is going to blast you. Oh, Damn man. it. At least I don't have to roll. So, everybody in the highlighted area... Everybody in the highlighted area make a save. Wait, he blasts his own mate? It looks like it, doesn't it? 18. Or 21. 13. Okay. Leah, you're at disadvantage. Dang it. For the next two rounds. I would not stick yourself to this blast if you can avoid it. <laughs> like, I rolled a 17 on the first and a 7 on the second. That, I removed like 10. I mean, I'm plus nine with right. So. All right, and then M4. Oops. M4 is going to attack. M4 is the tabaxi. She's using her claws. He's using his claws. Whatever you can't tell. All right, Raik, Raik, and Yukikaze. Yeah. Uh, that is a seventeen to hit. And it's going to try to bite you. Uh, it's a 21. Gonna miss. Okay. 21 wow. misses? He's wow. got like 23 AC. Nice. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot he had the magic armor now. Oops. Yeah, he tries, tries to gnaw on the armor and break some teeth. Alright, which brings us to Riken's turn. Riken, you're at disadvantage to make attacks. Of course I am. So I just make that better. Apparently one different, one number difference was all it mattered. So that is how saves work. <laughs> I mean, you were already uh, affected, so I didn't tell you if you made it or not because it didn't matter. You could have doubled it, so I'd be down for four rounds. That's, that's not how that's that works. That's how it works. That's not at all how it works. Do you works. want it to be how it works? <laughs> I don't want that to be how it works. <laughs> oh, Riken will attack. That is a 16. A 16 against M2. M2. That will hit! 
It's a dragonborn. Asshole dragonborn brethren blinding me. <laughs> um, six points of non-magical slashing damage. Still. All right. And then he'll attack again. Okay. Uh, 22. With disadvantage? That's awesome. I got 215. That's still awesome. Um, yeah, you hit. He's pulling a Rowan. <laughs> God damn it, I did less. So five points of silver and slashy non magical damage. Okay. Uh, it appears to be, you know, bloodied or whatever. Sandied. I'm done. Okay. You sanded. <laughs> it's uh, Jebel's turn. I am going to cast Moonbeam on M3. Moonbeam. Okay. Moon so Jebel drops Trow. <laughs> <laughs> Shoots a beam out of his ass. <laughs> uh, perfect. Uh, nothing's going to happen now. Nothing happens? <laughs> no, I have to wait for... It's... Leah's here. All right, so what what happens when you when you cast it? Do I have to make any saves? What do I visually see? Uh, a beam of white light shines down into the thing, into the square that it's on. Okay. No, it, Moonbeam doesn't take effect until the actual target's turn. Okay, so this square right here is currently glowing? Uh, M3. Uh, it's AD 22. Is the one who's what we're. Is it AD? Yes, AD 22. Yeah. Okay. It's a five foot radius, so depending on how you run it, it might be a little bigger. A gnome just got mooned. A five foot radius would be a burst one. So that area is now lit up. Just so that you're aware, you have included Yukikaze. How? Because it's a five-foot radius. Yeah. Yukikaze is inside of it. Let me double-check that. Is it five-foot radius? Yep. Oh, I thought it was five-foot diameter. You could just move it one square to the left. That's a big difference. I mean, is it even a problem for him? The Yuki Kaze? Yeah. Um, it might be. It would well, affect him. Okay, you have five seconds to choose what square you're putting it on. Are you leaving it there or are you moving it somewhere else? I move it one to the left. Uh, and if I move it once to the left, uh, get it to cover M2 as well. It w yes, it would. Yeah. Okay, I'll do it that way. It's M4 too. Oh, it's, uh, it was already hitting M4, it's just now he's lost the fact that it was hitting M1. I, apparently it doesn't do anything this turn, so, uh, Vendar. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna shoot M1. Okay. He, uh, M1, again, is the, the half-giant with uh, the two-handed great axe. Have good armor, too? He seems to, yeah. Like, before it got destroyed by time and weather, it was plate. I got a 19 to hit. You hit. <clears throat> 
22 magical piercing damage. 22 magical piercing damage. All right. Are you sandied? And are you doing anything else? Uh, I'll move over to the left of Lara Mendes. Okay. Uh, they can't fucking sandblast me. <laughs> I mean, they can move. Yeah, but if they move now, it would provoke opportunity. So? So I hope they don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this one's just like, fuck that guy in particular. Laramundus! I, I ran across the most hurt one. The most I miss hurt it. one. You miss it. Okay. Are you doing anything else? Uh, that's a 12. Yeah. So I, I assume it misses. Yes, it does. Uh, no, that's my turn. Okay, Cyrus. I'm gonna move to the square uh, just south of Laramindus mm -hmm. and shoot a firebolt and twin to where I'm gonna be trying to hit M3 and M1. Alright, spend the points. I keep. I gotta quit this ring. This thing. Oh, He's twinning it. So I got oh. a twenty-three to hit uh, the first one, which is M three. M three twenty-three will hit. All right. It take. Where? Where did my D ten go? I don't know. I have one. I. You did three shoot. damage. I would like to. I found mine. Can I roll it, please? Yes. I <laughs> I still rolled a three, but I get to add my charisma modifier, so it's six points of fire damage. All right, fine. Uh, they are, of course, weak to fire damage. And then I'm gonna send one. At... Oh wait, I forgot the second d10. Oops. So add another eight to that. Not uh, bad. It's 2d10 instead of just one. So it takes another eight fire damage, is what you're saying? Yeah, another eight, and then doubled for the vulnerability. Okay, oh, it's dead. Okay. And then I shoot one at M1. Got another 23 to hit. For 14 points of fire damage. Uh, 14 points of fire damage on M1. Assuming the 23 hits. Yeah, 23 will hit. Uh, he also dies. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Then I'm just gonna move uh, diagonally two spaces down to the left. Our fling is just rinsing through those numbers. Well, they're weak to fire, and he does fire. Not only do I do fire, I do it good. Cyrus the mummy bane. Da, 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 da. Leah! Yay. Um... I use Eldritch Blast on M2. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to step a little to the side. I'm going to step two blocks to the side, so I'm next to Lanamendus first. So I don't have to shoot through the Riken. Um, and I had this not just because of the sand blast. Yep. Fifteen. Fifteen to hit M2. That will hit! Yay. That's uh, five points of force damage. Five points of force damage. Zoom. You punch him with a force bolt. You get another bolt? Yep. I'm working on it. 
14. You still hit? Yay. It was an 18 on the first roll, but disadvantage. <laughs> One point of force damage. One point of force damage. <laughs> All right. Um, you're going to be so happy when that's no longer the case. Uh, Yukikaze. Uh, two of the guys you were just about to be fighting just suddenly exploded flames and died. Uh, M4 next to you, and M2 above that. M's 1 and 3 are down. Uh, wait. M2 is closer to everyone else, though, right? Yes. Alright, so I'll proceed to go up to M4. I'm gonna need you to roll dice for me, please. Okay. Uh, um, you are attacking it with your sword. Uh, yeah, so roll a D or a 20 for me. Alright, that's a 14 on the die. So that's 22 to hit. That will hit M4. Okay, we're only a D6. A D6. That is a 5 on the die. Um, so 10 magical piercing damage. 10 damage, alright. And can you roll me another D20? Yep. That is a three on the die. Uh, that will only be a... Math, 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 uh, 12. A 12 will miss. Okay, and then another d20. That's a 12 on the die. That'll be 20 to hit. That'll hit. Alright, roll me a d8. The eight. That is an eight on the die. So that will be twelve damage, non magical slashing. Twelve non magical slashing damage. Alright, Sandied. Alright, and I will do that's it for now. Alright, you're not gonna move? No, I'll stay right there. Okay. Then that makes it bad guy's turn. Mummy, 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 mummy. So mummy two. Yeah, mummy two. He's starting his turn in the thing. Yep. Are you my mummy? So it has to make a Constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw. I have to beat a sixteen. Uh, sixteen, you say? This one got not a sixteen. <laughs> So, uh, it took 11 radiant damage. 11 radiant damage, you say. Okay. Uh, it seems to be weak to that. It is still standing, however. Uh, it took a big hit from your uh, butt beam. And it's yeah. going to attack Riken. This no. is the Dragonborn. No, not after the butt beam. Dragonborn Mommy's punches. Mummy, don't hurt daddy. Okay, that is an 18 <laughs> against Riken's AC. It misses. Okay, it misses, and then it's going to try to bite you. And that is a 24 against your AC. That will hit. Okay. For the bite... Ward bite, 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 bite. You're going to take 15 okay. magical piercing damage. No, mommy, mommy beats daddy. It, it has magical fucking teeth. It does. And you're going to make a constitution saving throw. Twenty. Twenty, you make it. You uh, you manage to to shake off the effect as you feel something trying to decrepify you uh, coming into your body along with that bite. Ugh. Yeah, it's a really gross bite. Uh, which makes it Mummy Four's turn, who was also in the moonbeam. Is it? 
So he makes a con saving throw? Um, I don't know that it is. I mean, it's in the area of effect. Well, no, it's a 5 foot radius, which means that it's a 10 foot diameter. It means it could cover four squares. It is a burst one. I have marked out the square, what it affects. Oh, okay. Well, then. I, I am not going to deal with 5th edition's very poor indication of how things are supposed to be measured. We're using 4th edition because it was much better. Okay. Five foot radius is burst one, means it's five feet from the edge of the square in all directions. It hits eight, nine squares in total. Because I am 99% certain that is what they intended. They just have a very bad way of explaining it. Yeah, I don't understand why they marked everything in radius instead of diameter. Because they have always done that. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's from a square, not including the square. Has that actually been like specifically stated in previous editions? Yeah. In, uh, the, the, this, I believe it's in 3.5 and Pathfinder, they, they even have a, like, a section with, with the, where it's like depicted how bursts and all that work. Um, well, I rolled another 11. So they have to have a 7.5 to meet a 16. Uh, it has to be to 16. Okay. Uh, constitution, so it got a 16, which means it succeeds. What happens? It takes half damage. It takes half damage. All right. What is the total damage? Uh, 11. 11. All right. So it takes five points of damage, and then that gets doubled because it's weak. So 10 points of damage to number four. All right. Bam. And then it's going to attack Yukikaze uh, with its claws. Wow. And that is a 24 on AC, Yukikaze. Yukikaze. Mm -hmm. Twenty-four on AC. Oh, hit. All right. Uh, from this punch, claw punch, you will be taking uh, seven non-magical bludgeoning damage. And then it will attempt to bite you. Uh, and that's a 17 to hit. Spell miss. Okay. So just take the 7 non-magical bludgeoning damage. And then that's the end of the mummy's turn, which makes it Riken's turn. Ha <laughs> ha! Time to attack M2 again. Alright, with your disadvantage. Uh, 14. A 14 against M2. It will hit. Holy crap. Uh, another 6 silver non-magical flashing damage. You strike at it with your axe, and you cut it across the chest, and it falls, bur still burning to the ground. Huzzah. Huzzah. Uh, that leaves M4 still up, and you still have an attack. Uh, I will... Well, I don't know. <laughs> I can't really get to it unless I go into the moonbeam. You could go into the moonbeam. Throw your axe! I don't axe. want to go into the moonbeam. Throw it! You could throw your axe. I don't want to throw my axe. Do you have a javelin? No, they're all on freaking. 
Uvriel. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? Are you just le cutting off your turn? Um, it, it, can I see if M4 is bloodied? Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah, screw it. I'm not gonna do anything else. Okay. Uh, <laughs> gonna throw his axe. Alrighty, uh, that means after Riken, it's Jevil's turn. I'm going to try and form with... Is M4 the only one left up? M4 is still yeah. up. It's the only one? Yeah. It's the only one. Uh, I'm going to try and form with him. Okay. Because the, the first time it worked so great. <laughs> <laughs> it worked awesome. I don't know what you're talking about. It turns yeah, wasn't resistant to anything. Uh, 24 to hit. 24 will hit. That would have been extremely resilient for mommy. 8 piercing damage. 8 piercing damage, which it's resistant to. Alright, anything else? And I am going to... Let me just double check how far I can... I'm going. I can pull the ten feet towards me. You're going to pull him ten feet towards yourself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll just go right here. Now I have a question regarding that. Uh, does you kill the gets? Not um, for No. And even oh, okay. and even if this wasn't force movement, he wouldn't because it never left his <laughs> threatened area. All right. But yes, force movement does not trigger tr attacks of opportunity. Good to know. Hmm. All right, so is that the end of your turn? Yes. Vendar. I'm gonna shoot it. I'm gonna shoot it. Which one's this one? The taxi? It's uh yes, taxi. Lightly armored. That's a uh, 15 hit. That'll hit. Alright. Twenty magical piercing damage. It dies. <laughs> right. It just it it dies. Fatality. Finish him. Okay. So, is the moonbeam still there? I am going to call to Yukikaze and ask if there's anything else in the room coming. <coughs> but first, oh, is the moonbeam there? Do I see anything, Tristan? Uh, yes, you do see uh, in this room a piece of armor. A piece of the cord armor. Yes, you see, you see a piece armor. of the cord armor, <laughs> of course. I said, I, said a, I said a piece of armor. It's not the cord armor. I know, but I said cord armor. Twelve. <laughs> so I was just trying to find... I hid the number uh, for this room. There's a full set of armor there, but only one piece is from the cord armor. <laughs> we must find but the rest. One of the, gauntlets, one of the gauntlets is a piece of cord armor. The other one, the rest so... of it... <laughs> The room we were attacked from. The room we were attacked from was the room that Vendar was checking before we were looking yeah. at the room that Leah was in. Yep, it definitely had enemies okay. in it. Okay. Hmm. Oh, did I get an answer to my question? Person hasn't answered me yet. Okay. Patience, there, young Jebel. <laughs> Jebel one. Jebel one, Kenobi. No, it's Padawan. Jebel one. Gotcha. What? What is this? You guys don't see anything. You can't say. It's true. You see nothing. It's Walmart. 
for zombies. <laughs> cool zombies. You can't comment. You can't. You can't see any of this. I can make jokes. No, I prefer you didn't. <laughs> okay. Not because you can't see anything, but your jokes suck. <laughs> also true. Ow. <laughs> I mean, I know it's true, but you didn't have to say it to my face. Oh, I, didn't. God. I believe in tough love. I believe right. in tough love. Oh. So. <laughs> Oh my god. Thomas, you, you really, you're in the mood today. Mm -hmm. I love it. I had to move a lot of things around on my screen to copy that over easily. <laughs> Alright. Mama bingo. Alright, so. Yukikaze, yes. Since you are stood here, um, you can see this zombie, uh, mummy, uh, who seems to be uh, holding a torch in their hand and, and lighting a sconce. They seem yeah. completely oblivious to you. Um, okay. This whole field of pink squares here appear to be uh, stone sculptures or marble sculptures, uh, various different stones that they're carved of. Um, let's see here. Uh, quick... Uh, a cursory glance shows you that they are uh, a plethora of different races populating the room in rows. Um, they look very lifelike, uh, rather uncanny or eerie, in fact. Um, and among the rows, you can just barely make out this segment that's uh, this, these three squares over here. Um, it's hard to see exactly what's going on, but it looks like those, there are two mummies doing something with a statue. Oh my. <laughs> oh. Again, you've got all this in the way, so you can't tell what they're doing with the statue. So I will turn towards Jebel and show three fingers and I'll say, I think I see three. There he was. Alright. Uh... What do you think? Just went. Where Should was we I in a Vendar? Okay. Vendar's already gone. Where was I in a Vendar? Just gone. Okay. So, Vendar. Probably wouldn't be wise to go ahead of Jebel. I can deal with too many windows right now. 23. That's where you guys were. 23. Alright, so it is Vendar's turn. So, where are you moving to, Vendar? There is a moonbeam here. And all of these bodies, Raiken, and Yukikaze, uh, and Yukikaze is telling uh, you that he sees three zombie, three mummies in the room beyond. I will move around the moonbeam and try to get to the right of Yukikaze. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, <coughs> twenty-five. I can dash sure if I need to. Thirty. It would be 35 to get here, so you could just stay here if you wanted and not use a dash to get the extra 5 feet, unless you really, really want to. What else am I going to do with it? I don't know. Nothing, I guess. Can I hide, can I hide in the spot behind Yukikaze? No, because you're not a halfling. Yeah, so yeah, I'll, I'll use the dash and go there. Okay. Cool. Uh, after Vendar... It is Laramendus. Uh, Yukikaze uh, told Cyrus, or Cyrus, uh, Jebel, that there were three more mummies in the room ahead. Okay. I am going to go uh, one north of Riken. Alright. 5, 10, 15, 20. Alright. I like that I'm the only one with a name that fits in the square. And then, um, prepare in action if I see one in range that is, um, 
either coming up uh, if one of them attacks one of our ally one of the allies I will that is my trigger all right for simplicity I'm gonna do this not at that Three. One, two, three, four. Shit. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna crush this bingo. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, damn. <laughs> You're done. Say it. It's okay. Where did my... Why? Where... Where'd insert go? Where... Why don't I have insert? Insert a row! Why doesn't it exist? Sam, so, yeah, what the fuck? I Are should. In, is it still? No, it's not in like read-only mode because you've been changing things. No, it's not. Uh, the, in, uh, in I the can't. Bar up at I the can't top. be in copy mode. I can't be oh. in copy mode, or it doesn't work. That's really stupid. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this should. Bam. It's a Microsoft software. What do you expect? Uh, I don't understand the implication. Microsoft software works amazingly well. Mm -hmm. And I'm serious. Microsoft software works really well. I highly recommend it. Okay, good enough. No, wait. Now it's good enough. Okay, cool. Everything's here again. Everything old is new again. So, you're here, Laramundus. You can technically see this guy. Uh, I am preparing an action to attack one of them if they attack an ally. If they attack an ally? Okay. Yeah, that is my trigger. Alright, Cyrus. Yep. Let's see. Where can I get that thing from the ground? I will dash and move uh, to the right of Riken. Okay. <coughs> Leah. Actually, one more square so I it's not too late. Leah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to go behind you, Picasso. Um, that's it. Because I don't want to push past them with the moon being the last. Okay. I mean, you can squeeze through his square. Oh, so I can walk in there? I mean, that's how you got over there. You were here. So it was 5, 10, 15. This would be 20, 25, and then 30. Oh, that, that is my move speed, then. Yes, so you could get to the square in front of him if you wanted. If I dashing, yeah, but then I'm first, and without the move to shoot in case something moves towards me. And yeah, I but you, have an, you would still have your action to attack. That doesn't, you don't need to dash to get there. You can get to that square without dashing. Yeah. Oh. So you would have an action. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, well, then I'll do that. Okay. Sorry, I thought I had made it clear. Yeah, yeah sorry, I misunderstood. Alright, so you still have your action, okay. and this guy and is I five... Can... 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 50, 50, 50, 60, 65, 70, 70, 70, 80, 85. 85 squares away. 85 feet away. 85 feet away? Mm-hmm. Those are different numbers. 
They're very different numbers. Yeah. By an order of five, uh, so... My Ender's Pass... Ender's, my Ender's Pass is 120, so I can probably shoot those on the other side of the room, too, but don't have line of sight through the statues. Yeah, no. So, yeah, I'm going to shoot the guy with the torch. The poor guy who just wants to light the bracers. Okay. I mean, the poor half work. <laughs> that, you just wanted to light the sconces. <laughs> Do I still have disadvantage? I believe. I think so. It lasts for two rounds. How many times have you rolled with disadvantage? Uh, once. Well, two, twice in one round. But yeah, one yeah, no, no, but it lasts for two rounds, so then yes, you would still, it, this, it'll end after this round. Okay, so, uh, ten. That will miss. Yeah, I assume this much. Second is... Thirteen. That will also miss. Uh, well, you get to light your, light your sconces on another day. Oh, another round. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, just a wall around and it explodes. And it just casually ignores us. The Elder Trust hits the torch <laughs> as it's going to light one, so just the fire is now, you know, on the ground. <laughs> it continues moving as if to light torches. Uh, no, if that happened, it likely would have hurt him more because, you know, fire from the torch. Didn't land on him. I just punched it at. Who writes? After Leah. Save. After Leah, 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 Leah is Yuki Kaze. So, this seems like everyone's proceeding toward the door and it's feeling like they're going to go through, so I'm going to proceed 25 feet forward and have be ready to dodge. I thought he was going to say, be ready to die. <laughs> Alright, and uh, you are stay there. taking a defensive do action. I, do I see anything, like, anything extra now that I'm farther in? Um, that this area over here appears to be uh, broken chunks of stone. Uh, cursory glance again will tell you that it appears to be like broken off arms or feet or swords. Parts of statues it looks like. Just a big okay. pile of rubble from previous yeah, statues. Okay. Are they terracotta yeah, statues? Alright. So... Is it, it, is it terracotta? I mean, it. they appear to be... Ma there are some that appear to be like marble. There are some to be that appear to be like clay type stuff. And then there are some... Petrified people. So it's, so it's not the terracotta army. I, I don't get the reference. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it, it's the... it's one of the seven wonders, man. Okay. Oh, the one at the bottom of the ocean? Yeah. yeah. No, it's in China. Oh, okay. One of the emperors had a giant army of a clay soldiers built in his tomb. Uh, Life size. Yeah, no, I, I, I have seen images of this. I thought it was the something else. But yes, okay. Uh, it does not... They do not... Not all of the statues appear to be warriors. Um, so that makes it the mummy's turn. So we'll start with mummy five. Uh, who is going to have the fucking sconce they were lighting explode. <laughs> Uh, from an, an uh, errant Eldritch Blast, so realizing it's under attack. Just gonna move here. Alright. Um, you're going to hear scrape, scrape, thud. And then M6 is going to move. I feel like we're breaking into this when they as in the uh, Castlevania <coughs> sung by uh, 
stop. And these are just workers going about their jobs and reading Brook and Murph them all. <laughs> I mean, pretty much. Yeah, but they're undead, so, you know, best be done. Okay. Uh, now it is Riken's turn. Riken's out here. All the way out there. Get in there and get next to him. Riken is gonna go. Let's see. Uh, he's going to plant himself uh, to the left of Yukikaze. Five. Well, assuming I can get there. Fifteen, twenty. Can you get twenty-five, thirty? You can get north of Yukikaze, but you have to squeeze through Leah's square unless you walk through the moonbeam. Are you gonna walk through the moonbeam? Oh, that's well. That's only thirty. Is the diagonal extra? No, it's five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. It's because of Leah's square. You have to squeeze through uh, it, which takes okay. double movement. Guess I'm so thick. That's the stupid moonbeams. So I, I just don't care that she's in the square and plow over her. What? Uh, yeah, I'll be behind you, Kikaze, then. Alright. It's better there, anyway. All right. the real man stand in front. So that is one movement. You still have an action. Are you going to do anything with your action? No. You may take well, another move. I guess I'll prepare in case they come over. What are you preparing? Uh, and what is the trigger? Attack. Okay, you're going to prepare um, to attack. Uh, an enemy gets within range. Okay. Cool. After Riken, it is Jebel's turn. You're all the way up here, Jebel. What are you doing? Um, I can move 30 feet, and then I can move the moonbeam. 60 feet. As long as that you're, as long as it's not an action to move the moonbeam, you can do that. Or as long as it is an action, whatever. Uh, what, what, <laughs> what type of action is it to move the moonbeam? On each of your turns, after you cast a spell, you can use an action to move the beam up to 60 feet in any direction. Okay, so yes, you can move 30 and then move it, but then you can't do anything else. Yeah. All right. So, so where are you moving? Can I... I can move into the doorway, I think? Five, Five ten, fifteen, twenty. But Lee is in the way, unless you want to get inside your own moonbeam. Oh, I can get inside the moonbeam. I know it's fine. <laughs> it's five... Uh, okay, so you want to move thirty? So, I, five, ten... I know that yeah, is twenty, the door. twenty-five. You can the get problem. to here with thirty squares movement. With thirty feet of movement. Uh, I don't know where you're pointing. Is the... It's the, the the square up and left of Riken. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, you guys all see Jebel just walk nonchalantly into his moonbeam and then through it. Then I can move it 60 feet. So you five, can. Five, So if I move the center of it to each, what's your is that AJ that I'm in? Yep, you're in so, AJ seven. So can I move it to AJ eleven? I think it's the one directly down. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. 35. Yep. You can move mm -hmm. it there. That's only 35 feet of movement. Yeah, so that covers like the square in front of Yukikaze? Yeah, it goes right there. Yeah, right in and between the two of them. It's, so, yeah, it's, it's... There is a bit of, of a delay, so. Which is strange, because everybody else has, like, no delay. No delay? No, 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 
I'm, I have a delay. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, everyone still technically has a little delay, but it's not that much for some of us. I have like, yeah, I have like maybe a second delay at most. Yeah, when we tested it a couple of weeks ago, it was only like two seconds for most of the people in the I can U.S. See you, I can see you deleting. You just deleted the first yellow square just now. Oh, you are way behind. You're yeah, I barely really spot him. That's that's difficult. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's where I leave. That, that's the end of my turn. Okay. That makes it Jebel Vendar. Alright, I'm gonna roll a hide. Okay, you roll to hide. Jebel Dar. It's a... Uh, that is a... Uh... Alright, and then I'm gonna shoot... What are they all? Uh, in here, um, five is a half orc. Uh, sixteen, six is another dragonborn, and seven uh, appears to be another half giant. And their armor and weapons. Um, the half giant looks to be in very broken um, plate armor. Uh, the dragonborn seems to have chain, and the uh, half orc appears to have some form of leather. Am I hidden from the half giant? Number seven. Yeah. Right, I'll shoot the half giant. Okay. Uh, you sharpshooting. There's a yeah. There's enough crap in between you that with your with your hide check, uh, he's not going to be able to really get a beat on you. It's a 19 to hit. A 19, it will hit. That was good. Um, uh, 43 yeah. magical piercing damage. Okay. Yeah, he's sandied. Instantly. Alright, anything else? Uh, nope. Okay. And that makes it uh, Laramenda's turn? Laramenda's turn. Which one did you shoot? He shot this one. Over here. Evan. Okay. Right. It captures my mouse, right? Yeah. Okay. I said it too, but I'm always curious. I am going to move one east of Jebel and then shoot M7 with. Uh, uh, actually, no, not. Yeah, no, my slime won't be able to stop any of them from getting to anyone. So, yeah, shoot M7 right across. Okay, M7, roll it. So, really good, 13 right? 13 hit. A 13. <laughs> You know, it it just happens to be your day. That misses. Yeah, that's what I thought. That was a four on die, so I mean, that's fair. <laughs> All right, after uh, Laramundus is Cyrus. All right. The undead slayer. No, mummy slayer. Mummy specifically. So let's see. Um, what about Atlantically? So I can't get to. <laughs> He's got this oh. motion that the motion, the no, this notion that the motion of the ocean means small craft advisory. <laughs> so I can't get through without dashing. So I guess I'll just shoot at M six. Yeah, and shoot at M six. Okay. Jebel, I have a question. Does your moonbeam provide any kind of visual impairment? Um, Does it provide, um, not cover, no. but uh, concealment. concealment? Concealment. It doesn't state that. Okay. It's uh, dim light. 
Okay. Um, Makes it easier to see now. All right. I'm going to say that he's got half cover because of Leah. Okay. I expect he would since there's kind of a whole blockade in front of the door. Yeah. But, like I said, I can't get through. Yeah. Well, you know that you can go through ally squares. They just cost double movement. Yeah, well, I, that's, I mean, that's the thing. I can't actually get through. I could stop in Jebel's square. <laughs> oh, actually, you can't do that. Stop in square. You can't do that. All right, so you're attacking six. Roll it. Just imagine you try to stop in her square and she just, like, shoves you out of it. <laughs> so 25 to hit. Yeah, I'll hit. And... That is a D8, no D10. There's the D10. <coughs> 11 points of fire damage. 11 points of fire damage. Okay. That seems to be super effective. Uh, anything else? Uh, after, like I said, after I shoot the firebolt, can I move to the square behind Jebel? Okay. I have a question. Yes. Did I move through the moonbeam? That's not what I meant. You told me you were going to move through the moonbeam. You said it three times. I'm moving through the moonbeam because I know it doesn't do anything to me. Okay. I might have been wrong about that. Please <laughs> tell me what happens when you move through the moonbeam because you absolutely moved through the moonbeam. Well, it's the same thing as if you... It's basically the same thing as if you start the turn in the moonbeam. Okay, so please roll your save against your own spell save DC, <laughs> you dumbass. Oh, that did not go well. <laughs> you lose please, your... please roll damage against yourself Remember with your own you spell, you dumbass. Do I, get, I don't get your plus three. Do I get Why not? No, because you were way far away from me when I... Uh, yeah, no, he doesn't get it. Yeah, no, Riken, Riken was, like, back over here when it happened. Oh, please. Please minimize. Oh, yeah, that's six. So, that's if I recall, Moonbeam's also a concentration spell. Yeah. So, roll your con check against a DC of ten. Which is a constitution saving throw, DC 10. Yeah, that's a 17. Okay. It would have been funny if he constantly walks to do it and then he's like, ah! <laughs> I thought it was okay! <laughs> I don't know how to magic yet. Yeah, at that point, Lara Mendes is just like... <laughs> <laughs> Je Jebel's just sort of smoldering as he comes on the other side. <laughs> he takes radiant damage. He's missing one of his eyebrows. Oh, that was the good one. It tasted the best. Oh, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> uh, what was going on? <laughs> Cyrus went, so that means it's Leah's turn. I'm going to grab a drink. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um. What the fuck is that? M three M five M seven. Okay. So yeah, I had put my eyes between my like uh, down, and it made everything really hard to see for some reason. Okay. <laughs> uh, Eldritch blast. Who can I hit? Everyone. Uh, from where you are, you you can see all of the enemies. And I can hit all of the enemies without... Well, I mean, they're gonna have, like, this one will have cover, this one will not, and this one will. So these two have cover, this one does not. I'm waiting for your cursor to appear. Five. Five does not have cover. Okay. Um... Yeah, okay. Uh, it's it's right because it's and he never saw a cursor up here, huh? Yeah, yeah. Mine's... yeah. 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 Is it frozen? It's, I don't see anything changing anymore. Mm. But, 
Okay, yeah, I'm gonna shoot five. Nothing is changing? It says it's still streaming. Yeah, nothing's changing. Well, I mean, I'm not changing anything at the moment. Hold on. Well, like, you're not, like, your cursor isn't moving around at all. There's no, like, squares being clicked. Yeah, just, just refresh it. Oh, no, no, I see your cursor. Yeah, I refresh the page and it's working fine now. Okay. I just zoomed in there for a second. Everybody tell me when you see a real colorful room one. I see it. I can, I can see a real colorful room one. Okay. Everybody good? Is there anybody who cannot see the really oh, okay. colorful room? Okay. Back to room 12. Is the sand thing gone? You said two rounds, right? Yes, it's gone. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's uh, 20. 20 for M5, that will hit. Um, okay, sure. <laughs> uh, that's six points of force. Six points of force damage, alright. And then it's, uh, 14. 14, that will actually hit. Yay. Fire off another fight. bolt. And strike it once again in the arm. Yeah, with five. Five points of force damage, I heard. So, elemental. Okay, elemental? No, e e eleven total. As eleven total. total, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's good, that's all good. I got it, I got it, it's all good. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. Bibbidi bobbidi dead. Uh, after Leah is Yukikaze. There's a moonbeam here. It, uh, Jevil... Thomas, I need to understand. You moved that moonbeam across some of your friends when you were moving it. Uh, um, did I? Can I not move it? Mm. You, when you moved it earlier, it would have gone across Yukikaze. So when you move it over somebody, do they still have to make that save? Uh, when a creature enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn... So, yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm just really not very good with this spell, guys. <laughs> so, Yuki Kaze, please make a, what was it, wisdom? Uh, Constitution. Constitution. Constitution saving throw. As earlier, this glowing moonlit zone moved across you and tried to burn you with radiant light. Radiant damage. Radiant dim light. Yukikaze? There you go. Uh, seven. Seven. How much damage does he uh, take? Uh, and you added my plus three, right? No. I don't think he had it earlier. This, this would have been earlier. This is retroactive. Yeah. I'm afraid he takes 14. Shovel was moved yeah. after... But it, but, okay, so here's the problem. 7 plus 3 is 10. The DC is 16. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. So it, it, it's nice, but it doesn't matter. Um, Alright, so... I'm sorry, what did he take? 24? No, 14. 14. So... Oh, take 14 <laughs> 14 points of radiant I, damage as Jebel moves his spell across your square so I, far the way. I would have to roll extremely well for him to get 24 damage on 2d10 you would have to roll really really well I would be very impressed and mildly scared um, yeah, so after that beam would have passed through, you guys is not looking so hot. <laughs> Things were going so great up until then. Yeah, up until, you know, the friendly fire. <laughs> Which, incidentally, isn't. It's true, it isn't. <laughs> but it does have the right of way. No, wait, that's incoming fire. Feels so good. I mean, friendly fire is incoming fire. It's true. In any well, it event. depends if you're the friend. <laughs> so, in any event, uh, I do believe it is Yukikaze's turn to act, 
It was just that I realized he had been uh, in an area that was causing damage. What are you going to do with your turn? You have the moonbeam in front of you. You know it hurt you pretty badly. No, I know more than it hurt me pretty badly. Yes. I'm... You also know it's Jevil's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. I need a moment. I need a moment. Trying to think of the things I have that I am capable of doing at the moment. Is Second Wind one of them? Yep, but I'm also looking for any extra items I have on because I am not doing well. Is Action Surge one of them? I said yes! No, you didn't say yes because I only asked a question each one once. And I said, yeah, but I'm looking to see if I have any items on me that I, I can also use. Yes, you said that when I asked about Second Wind, and then I asked about Action Surge. Those are two different powers. I think half the internet's so, going to be... Huh? What? Well, just give me a second to think. So, if I can directly behind me, correct? Yes. So, I want to step back to where I'm beside him, probably going to AL, and... Um... I'm going to... Can I take a second to ask him... To, uh, you have, phrase it as a, in character. You have six seconds of talking. And then can I still do an action along with it, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to say, Riken, I could really use a heal. And then I will second wind also. Okay. And that will be it. Okay. It is the mummy's turn. Yeah. Unfortunately, the mummies go before me. Hi. You know what time it is? It's Sandblast time! No, not again. I just got out of one. <laughs> Everybody in the highlighted area, please make a dexterity saving throw. It's literally everybody else. God damn it. <laughs> Fucking sandblast. 17. No, I still can't see the highlight of area. Well, you failed if you got a 17, because I failed the last time. You're, you're in it. Uh, I got a 1, so that's not going to matter. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm disadvantaged again. Your eyes were wide open when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> it ran up. You went, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I look? It got in my eyes. It got in my mouth, my nose. <laughs> it's just everywhere. <laughs> it's coarse That's and That's dry. Can you, you know, remind me what gross. this is? It gets everywhere. What? What's, what saving throw is it? It's Dexterity. Dexterity. Okay. And I'm getting uh, Riken's aura, am I? Uh, everybody inside of... Yes. Boop, yeah, boop, yeah, I forgot boop, about that. Everybody in the... the... You're close enough to get blasted by the, the sand blast, and you're, close, and you're within <laughs> the radius. Everybody in the newly highlighted area is within uh, Riken's aura. Okay, then, then that means I got 20. Okay. I got 25. Okay. You ever want to know if you have my save? All you have to do is count two squares around me, and <laughs> if you're in it, the answer is it. yes. <laughs> yeah. I believe an eight fails. 
Okay. <laughs> Alright, and no, this this particular attack is not affected by cover, Cyrus. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So, <laughs> Yukikase and Raiken are uh, at disadvantage for the next two turns on their attack rolls. Uh, it sounds like everybody else is fine. Am I with my 16? Yes. I don't know if you saw it. Okay. I haven't saved my halfling, halfling luck three times tonight. It's good. Uh, I think the 16 saves. Hold on. Let me just a quick double check. I'm pretty sure it does. So half of us made it, half of us didn't? Sand attack. Yeah. 16 makes it. 16 didn't make it earlier because there was another extenuating factor that made the DC higher. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> not telling you what it was, because it'll be funny when it happens again. No! It's they use each other's bodies! It's hilarious to me. Anyway, um, so yes, all of you, or you two are at disadvantage. And then uh, M7's gonna come over here. Oh, wait a second. M5 uh, got within my range. You're correct. You may make an attack. You don't have to do it at disadvantage because it's a uh, immediate interrupt. Uh, 23. 23 on M5 will hit. Uh, 9 points no, of silver splash in uh, non-magical damage. Alright, you do so. It is not yet sandied. So M7 moves over. Eeny, meeny, oh, miny, Cyrus. Well, there goes my perfect trick. <laughs> I'm hoping to get the dungeon untouched. Not gonna happen. Uh, that's a 22 to hit. Um, yeah, um, that hits. Okay. So you are going to be taking as, uh, oh. <laughs> Okay, I didn't need that die anyway. <laughs> Fine. Um, please take 12 non-magical slashing damage. As it, no. as it strikes at you uh, with a, uh, a great sword. And then it's going to try to bite you. Jerk. Uh, which it misses. I like the thought of this, like, eight-foot half giant. Bending down to bite the fucking halfling. Fucking halfling. Can't get a good taste. And then bites the entire head. I really wish I had longer defense spells. All right. All of mine only last like a minute. M six. So M6 is just going to go straight through, because fuck it. YOLO. Um, and <laughs> it got a 22 on its constitution saving throw. Oh, wow. Damn it. The nerve. So what? 15... No, half 15. Half of 15, you said, for radiant yeah. damage? Okay, so 15, because they're weak to radiant. <laughs> well, and that was 6. 14. Yeah, it would be 14. Yeah, okay, good point. Because it takes point. half of it, which is 7. Right, and right. Then that gets and then doubled. doubles it. You're, you're correct, you're correct. Good catch. Thank you. It takes less damage. <laughs> Our pleasure. One left. Um, boop -a doop -a doop -a doo Yeah, and then it's going to... Uh, Sandblast! Uh, <laughs> well, I don't give a shit. I don't have to roll for it. That's <laughs> true. This is the thing. In your mouth. Do it! 15. Oh, 15, so yep, you fail. I got a, a 7. You fail. Because I rolled a 1, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, you fail. Jebly. It would be... Am I still beside Riken? Yeah, so it'll be 15. You fail. 
Cyrus. Uh, 24. Okay, you're the only one who doesn't fail. You fail. <laughs> I find it people got sand in their face. <laughs> so, everyone who failed, you have disadvantage on attack rolls for the next two turns. <laughs> Baller. Your accuracy sharply dropped. <laughs> Your accuracy sharply dropped. <laughs> Alright, Riken, show them how it's done. Alright. <laughs> Sand attack. Well, unfortunately... Uh, I won't be making an attack uh, this turn. Oh. You gotta feel if you can cause it first. Or are you just gonna hand him a nice little bandage? On the bandage? Right side, the sand attacks meant they didn't attack you, Kikaze, so he's no more hurt. Um, let's see, hold on. I'm looking at this. I love that, like, everybody was beasting these deck saves, and then suddenly almost everybody failed. Uh, I am going to use your wounds okay. on Yukikaze, second level spell, so it's 3d8. Alright, where do you touch Yukikaze? Because you, uh, Cure Wounds is a touch spell. Uh, on his shoulder. Okay. <laughs> He's like, here you go, bit. Sport. Sport. <laughs> <laughs> Smack him on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just reach no, out. <laughs> he just you raise one hand next to your head and then slap it down on his shoulder. And go hey. Because I show on this doll exactly where we touched you. Points to his face. I did not touch your face. That was wrong. Okay, it's um yeah, it's two d eight plus my spell casting ability modifier. So. Okay, so 2d8 plus 3, roll it. Well, that wasn't too bad. That was bad. <laughs> uh, 10 points! <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. Could have been worse. You, you regain 10 HP, Yukikaze. As, uh, as Riken uh, turns and, and whispers a prayer in Draconic and then touches your shoulder with a glowing hand. You feel some of your wounds healing a little bit. Uh, and after Riken, it is Jebel, who has uh, a, 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 a disadvantage on attack rolls this turn. Yeah, but if he moves the thing over all of us, he can make an attack roll. <laughs> all going to I was planning on moving it one diagonal so that it covers... And five and six. Okay, you can do that. And then I want to cast. How injured does? Uh, it's an there? action to move it, so you can't cast a spell unless it's a. Which it is. Healing word is a bonus action. Okay. Um. So how injured is Yukikaze? Look, like does he look bloodied or? Yukikaze, are you bloodied or above? Blo are you below or above bloody? Bloody is half. Half. Off. Um. Did you get the ten HP from Riken written down? Yes, I did. Okay. So, are you above or below half? I am bloody. Okay. That's then I will checking. cast. Um, healing word. Where's, Where's the it? word? All right. Uh, Roll it. Where's the word? Jebel says something in Gnomish. It sounds soothing. Uncommonly soothing. To anyone who speaks Gnomish, it's, oi, fucker! <laughs> it's one word. No. Get well soon. There, there. There, there. To whom it may um, concern. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. You gain uh, another eight, eleven eight. HP. Yukikaze is looking surprisingly better. Holy shit, our, our, our fucking uh, healers doing their healing job. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, um, what's the damage that those two Zamambis have to roll against? Uh, nothing yet. It doesn't uh, 
take effect until their turn. No, it's when it's when they enter the, for the first time on yeah, a round. So, so when it gets you're to moving it over, someone enters it. Yeah. When it gets to their turn, that won't do anything because it's still the same round. But la di da. Uh, see, that's why I keep getting so bloody confused about this. Yeah, so they... like you and and Yuki Kaze took damage from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get confused about this shit sometimes. Okay. Right. Do I roll both individually? Uh, okay. No, it's an AOE, so it's a single uh, damage roll. So five succeeded okay. and uh, six failed. Oh, well, that's 11. 11. So, 5 takes 10 damage. And 6 takes 22 damage. Plus, just remember, Jubble, you're the beginning of the round and Lycan's the end of the round. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I have the pin open. I mean, even that doesn't actually matter it matters from like when a thing occurs uh -oh. in this case so they hadn't touched it at all this round and then it went, cr went across them for, so for simplicity it affects them immediately because that's the first time this round but if they move into it or start on it on their turn now which is before one round has gone by since it happened nothing will happen that's all but if they don't move and start another turn anyway, then it would turn over. Yeah. The, uh, the, the it's just it's the 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 thing that we're trying to they're trying to fix is um, taking damage twice from the same thing in a single round. Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Right. What just happened? I lost track of me. Where in initiative are we? <laughs> Uh, uh, that was Jibble. So it's Vendar. Vendar. It's Vendar. Me? Okay, cool. I... You are currently not hidden. How hurt are they all? Uh, how hurt are they all? Um, seven is really hurt. Uh, six is even more hurt than that. And five is not super hurt. Can I shoot five? Uh, if you move. You can always, I mean, you can always roll hide and then move out and fire and still get the benefit of the hiding from the shot. Oh, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know. I got a 27 for hide. Okay. I'll move to just behind Leah then, and I'll shoot five. Okay. <clears throat> you may attack with advantage. And five was the half orc? Yes. Uh, and it had, like, chain armor, you said? Uh, the half-orc five had, like, some sort of leather armor, like, maybe studded leather. Uh, uh then I'll use, I'll use sharpshooter, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a 20 to hit. 20 to hit will hit. <coughs> 35 magical piercing damage. 35 magical piercing damage. Boof! You fire off this magic arrow and it tears an entire chunk out of this thing's torso. Somehow it's still standing, though. Oh my god! I'm doing my job. You guys finish them off. <laughs> it seems to barely still be on its feet. After Vendor, I believe, is Laramendus. Yes, Laramendus. I, I aim at that one. Okay. Uh, n no. <laughs> <laughs> Ram Frost is not serving this time. Oh, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> I decided to roll the second die just because I was curious with the disadvantage. Crit. Second one was a crit. <laughs> First one was a two. <laughs> I don't think an 11 hits. <laughs> no, an 11... Uh, yes. It doesn't. Uh, uh, an 11 will in fact hit because oh of the God. massive damage 
that, uh, that, that Vendar just inflicted upon this thing's body and ripped no, away. He ripped away most of its body, so that included the armor. Mm -hmm. It's like a barely standing chunk of meat now. <laughs> it is nine cold damage. It's more like beef jerky. <laughs> nine cold damage. Sandy beef jerky. I'm suppressing a hearty laugh. Does it have one more? It has one HP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thorn with this thorn. Be because it had five. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but hey, good job, buddy. Hey, it's slowed by ten feet. <laughs> by ten feet, and and all that space, the ground it needs to cover to get at its next. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Cyrus. Um, I'm going to disengage and move behind Vindar. Okay. Do so. Because, no thank you. What, you didn't like that? I mean, if I can shoot that without disadvantage at point blank range, then I'd do that, but I can't. <laughs> You'd be at disadvantage anyway just because of the point blank range. Yep, that, that's what I was saying. You also because... have disadvantage because of sandstorm, sand attack. No, I don't. No, you I've don't. made every save. Get defensive about it, then. Anyway, it is Leah's turn. Yes. Ow. Um... Which one was it that I just got a chunk removed from it? Five. Okay, then I'm shooting five. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh... So that's 25. That'll hit. And that was with disadvantage. That rolled a 17 and an 18. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead. It only had one HP. Oh, okay. And then, um... Then I'm using my second blast on uh, M6. Okay. That was annoying. What? You won't believe this. 20 and a 1? No, two 20s. Well, I, I don't. crit with a disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> I do find that difficult to believe, but I guess good job. I yeah, I did not expect that to happen. Um. And now I'm going to roll shit with the, <laughs> with the two times. Because that's a two, and that is a five, so seven. Seven force, seven damage. force damage. On a crit. On a crit. And I'm, I'm still to roll above a ten when I crit. I, I am suppressing a hearty laugh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> After Leah is Yukikaze, you have a chance to save your life. What do you do? Well, the attack the one in front of me. Oh, excuse me. He's dead already. Yeah, there's, there's. I hadn't updated it because I was doing other things. That one is now dead. You can still attack it. You can if you want to. It just won't do as much good. You could attack this one. It might be satisfying. Well, I will scoot over without walking into the moon blast okay. to... You just squeeze past oh. Riken, it's fine. You just, you can move through an ally square, it just takes double movement. So rather than it being 5, 10, it's 10, 15. My, uh, 10 is not going to hit. Against number six? No, a ten will not hit. <coughs> it's a Durgan burn with a, a chain armor. Oh, wait. Durgan burn. Durgan burn. roll disadvantage, but I still rolled low anyways with both. Okay. Roll again. Uh, um, that was the first roll, so I remember that number. Uh, lowest was 20. Uh, the lowest was 20? Yep. 
Nice. Uh, good roll. Uh, that'll hit. That will be seven magical piercing. All right. It dies. Okay, then. You have 15 movement level. Yeah. You can just attack this one. You just... You can turn and attack that one with your bonus action. Oh, there's that one right there. Okay. Yep, right behind you. Short sword attack. Lowest is 19. Lowest is 19. Damn. Well, I, I rolled a 19 and then I rolled a 10, so... Alright. Yeah. Um, that, that'll hit. 19 will hit its AC. Ten non magical slashing. Ten. Alright. It's still standing, but you hit it. Alright. After Yukikaze is the mummy. Just just the one mummy this time. Just the one. Here comes the one mummy. The one mummy. Uh it's going to take a swing at Jebel with its greatsword. And it scored a twenty one to hit. For me? Yeah, you. Yeah, that'll hit. Okay, please take 12 non-magical slashing damage. And do I beat? Alright, and now it's going to try to bite you. And it got a, uh, it got a 15 to try and bite you. Uh, oh, yeah, that hits as well. That also hits. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, then that will be uh, 15 magical piercing damage. And make a constitution saving throw. Uh oh. You are in range of Riken. That's a non natural 20. Okay. You make the saving throw. You resist whatever the other effect was, but you still take the 15 magical piercing damage. Is that a magical attack? It's. Attack? It's fangs. No, constitution doesn't apply. No. Yeah, you only have advantage on magical attacks that target, like, charisma, uh, wisdom, and intelligence. Yeah. Any event. So, uh, that. And then it is, I believe, Riken's turn. Riken! Riken will move past Yuki Kaze now. <laughs> Leapfrog! Leap lizard! And then attack M7 with disadvantage. Oh, well, pretty sure that's going to be my number. Um, nine. <laughs> the lotion. I'm on nine. On a plate uh, armor monster. On, on, a on a guy who's got shitty plate armor, so uh, that's a no. Yeah. Uh, second one. I still don't think this is going to hit. Uh, 13. A 13 will also not hit. Yeah, I kind of figured. That, that disadvantage is pretty poopy. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have it anymore, but I'm sure he's going to be dead, probably. You can't hear accuracy sharply fell. <laughs> Alright, Jebly. Je, Jebly, yeah. Jebel, you're up. Jebly. Jebly blah. Uh, do, do you still have disadvantage? I don't remember. I'm not keeping track of that shit. <laughs> Yeah. I've got too many things to keep track of. So M7... So the other two are dead? Uh, yeah, M7's the last one. And uh, it looks like this room is clear after that. Let me just check real quick. I'm going to the strong book. Okay. I believe that you still have disadvantage, yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay. That has his advantage, still has it for one more. Okay. 14 plus 8 is 22. Was that with disadvantage? Yeah. Nice. Uh, 22 will hit. <coughs> It's a seven. That's seven, seven piercing damage. Seven piercing damage. 
All right, it seems to resist that. <coughs> and is that all for your turn? Um, let's just double check. Where's... Mm. Yeah, sure. Vendorific. All right, I'll go back to where I was, and I'll hide. So you're gonna go over here and hide. Okay. So I got a 19, 19 to hide. Okay. And I'll shoot number seven. Okay. I have advantage. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'll give it to you. Hit. Did it what? Hit. You hit? Okay. I didn't hear a number, but I assume you you're you're, you're confident, so that's fine. As I got a I got a twenty one. Yeah, yeah, that'll hit. I just, I just wasn't sure if it was breaking up or not. A 29, you said? Yeah, that'll do it. I got it, yeah. Yeah, you got it. You got it. That is super duper... Super duper dead. dead. Super duper dead. Super duper dead again. He's dead, Jim. All right, and it's uh, it's ten forty. So yep. good job on the combat. Uh, everybody, take uh, three hundred experience. Hey, I'm level ten. Welcome to level ten. I need to roll. Oh, I almost give myself three hundred damage. Don't right. give yourself three hundred damage. It's not a good idea. I I can't stop you from doing it though. So I mean, like, if you do. Start rolling a new character. <laughs> yeah, it's all in the... Super duper dead. Yeah. All I'm right. not level 10 yet. Just 2,500 more points to level 10. I'm dropping... What do you call it? Moonbeam, by the way. Just so. Cool. 1,448. I uh, recover my arrows. I fired six. You fired six. Let's find out what we got here. Uh, two. Uh, four. You recover all of them. Uh, as you are. Uh, picking up your arrows uh, from the different uh, zombies and a, a quiet settles over the room uh, as the, the crackling of the burning zombies in the doorway uh, dies away as the fires go out um, and these zombies hisses and moans have died away and the echoes have stopped off the stone walls of the chamber uh, again as I said uh, all of these are very lifelike sculptures of um, people of different races and gender, uh, differently clothed, armored, uh, some in heroic poses, uh, some in, you know, very just artistic, uh, candid poses. Um, this is a pile of, um, it looks to be broken pieces of statue, like misplaced fingers, hands, arms, leg, ankle, yada yada, anything that could end up over there. There are a couple heads in there. Uh, swords or shields. Um, all of the ones that are arranged in this grid pattern seem to be intact. Um, and as this quiet settles over the room in in the wake of the combat, um, you are going to hear suddenly, uh, shattering that, that quiet, a, a small voice uh, that says, Hello? And I'm going to end it there. <gasps> Dun, 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 dun. Wait, what? What? <laughs> Maybe it's the one they Is were dragging. Something, something's alive in there? Something said hello. Doesn't mean it's alive. Turned it into that. Maybe it's the gnomish construction. Maybe it's another devil. 
It's another Jebel. <laughs> My name is Jebel. Another Jebel. Another oh, Jebel. Uh, it's, a, it's a female Jebel. So wait, we'd have three Jebels now? It, it, that's what you need. There's three Jebels. That's how you win. Uh, before sure. before we uh, stop, uh, how is Yuki Kaze looking? He hmm. looks fine. He looks fine. He looks fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. How's Je uh, how's Jevil and Cyrus looking? I look oh. hurt. I want healing. You want? He you didn't even take that much damage. So? <laughs> Jevil is badly bloodied. Badly bloodied. Well, uh, last at least. Then Riken is going to give him uh, twenty points of. Play on hands. <laughs> oh, well, I remember that. I don't like that. Well, um, it's three hours and fifty minutes until I have to get up again, so I'm just going to go and try okay. to sleep a little. All okay. right. Thank you for joining us. Uh, are us. you are you over? Are you better now, Jebel? Uh, are you give me twenty. Yeah. Twenty. You. I am still bloody, but I can hear myself a bit more. Jesus! <laughs> Holy crap! How, wow. dead, how close to death were you? <laughs> he got shot by a laser. Yeah, yeah I was, I had, was I had 19. <laughs> and, then he, and then he hit himself with his own moonbeam. <laughs> and, and then he hit Yuki Kaze with the moonbeam. <laughs> Yeah, there's a reason I stood to the side of that thing. Uh, he was just in a terror. He's like, I'm just going to kill everyone, including me. Yeah, I, I oh, yeah, wanted to Tristan. let it get into the room. Mm -hmm. What? About my message. Was I correct? No. No? Nope. Oh, okay. Nope. Maybe someday, but not today. Damn! Why are there little tiny skulls? Wait, match. is that a D6? Are those the pips? The pips are skulls? That yeah. is what it looks like. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Are just the six side skull pips, or are they all skull they're pips? All, they're all skulls. Ooh, that's neat. I like that. Yeah. The only that thing is, is that it's a cool. very uneven. Alright, I'm going to end the stream. Thank everybody and anybody who joined and watched, and I hope it was enjoyed. It was. Join us next week again, Tuesdays at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in America. Aren't we uh, daylight time? <laughs> no, daylight time just ended. We're back on... Save, no, on, on... no, I thought it just started. All the way around, but we're on daylight time now. I don't, so confusing. I don't know why it has to change names, though. Why can't it just be the same name? Because you're supposed to know which one's forward and which one's backward, but I thought the other one was the daylight time and this was standard time. No, it's the one where Hooper clocks forward, which means it's the daylight time. Somebody just got a Facebook notification. I think. Unless anyway, it's your standard every Tuesday, 7.30, Eastern something time. <laughs> Eastern time. <laughs> Eastern time. <laughs> Just uh, come here for Christmas more I episodes of Daylight because Every... you know, Everybody you loves know. Riken. <laughs> Everybody loves Riken. <laughs> and you fall back so that the day's end. I don't want to know this.